All over Britain, a new breed of detective is at the forefront of the battle against a rising tide of serious crime. Their work often goes unseen. But for the first time, we go behind closed doors with Lancashire's top police investigators as they attempt to solve the most mysterious and horrifying crimes. An armed robbery at a remote farmhouse. Literally blasted the way into this family home and, and quite shocking, to be honest. And an act of violence against a baby. He's just shoved her and she's just gone flying into the, into the door with a baby. Please! This is the inside story of how Lancashire's major investigation team brings some of the UK's most dangerous criminals to justice. And you're going to be charged with two offences. The first one is a Section 18 assault, which is the highest level of assault. The second one is possession of an offensive weapon. Police have been called to a remote farmhouse in South Lancashire. They have discovered a 55-year-old man who claims he was attacked, bound and gagged by multiple gunmen who made off with various valuable items, including seven hunting rifles and his car. We believe they've used a son-off shotgun and, and, and shot through the window. They've threatened him, they've tied him up and it's been quite traumatic for the man. They've just literally blasted the way into this family home and, and it's quite shocking, to be honest. With such a serious incident involving multiple firearms, detectives in Skelmersdale have launched a major inquiry and have interviewed the terrified farm owner, who's told them what took place. He believes a shotgun was fired through one of his windows. He believes that then, it, it, through that or another window, he saw a sawn-off shotgun pointed at him. They said there's three men come in, they're all balaclavered up, he presumed there's four men, because he presumes there's one outside. Straight away, they're saying, where's the guns? Where's the money? There's not, have you got a gun cabinet? Where's the guns? Where's the money? That's what they're asking. And then they say they tie him with some ties. He tells them where the, either where the keys is or gets access to the safe. They steal between four and five grand, he says, and they steal seven guns. They ask him for the keys of his Land Rover and they go off in his Land Rover. So the Land Rover, that is then abandoned. Some walking distance away is also abandoned and burnt out, this one, an Audi. So it's stolen from the Wigan area. The biggest concern for me, there's, there's seven guns out there at the minute that we don't know where they are. Um, we'll look at firearms registry, but then there's a lot of inquiries on the lines of witness statements to take uh, and what's happened and why. There's a, you know, lots of guns in this country in the, in the hands of law-abiding people. We are red hot on the registration of guns, but guns are out there in the criminal fraternity, and if they are, it is a real concern to, to us. You know, this is a big priority issue for Lancashire Constable. We need these guns back. At the farmhouse, Detective Inspector Joe Key, who is the senior investigating officer, is keen to take a look at the crime scene. The victim said he thought he was going to die. You know, he's got a young child. He was in the house on his own. Fortunately, the child wasn't here, but he's had shotguns pointed at him. He's had a shotgun discharged at him. He's had a knife held to his throat. He's been tied up. Um, it's pretty frightening, I would guess. The victim attempted to hide from the robbers under the stairs. We believe that he's run into this, this small space here the door's been pulled, he's pulled the door shut behind him and he's holding it, and they've shot the lower hinge here. Right. The barrel of the gun comes through the window and points down, and threats are then made. At that point, he comes mm. out of here and uh, gives himself up. Uh, obviously, then they've then emptied the gun cabinet yeah. of guns. OK. Make good their escape. It was really useful to understand the layout of the area under the stairs that we looked at where the victim has hidden. But I suppose the one question it doesn't answer still is, how did they know that that window led to that particular area? I suppose they could have taken a good guess or, or either they've sort of they've known or they've had some sort of indication of the layout, maybe done a recce beforehand or they know about it. It's really hard to say, but 
that's that's the sort of what we need to sort of get to the bottom of now, really. Inside the property, forensic officers have potentially made an important discovery. Traces of blood found on a picture frame. We've recovered some blood from within the area, and our agree states that that blood, in the best of his knowledge, is not his blood. Uh, that blood has then now been forwarded to the laboratory. So what's in the undercover room or whatever? What, in the undercover room there is a large gun cabinet yeah. and portraits, pictures that are yeah. stacked up next to it. Yeah. On one of those pictures, there is what appears to be a fresh smear of blood. Tell me that's not going to be pheasant, Chris. I hope it's not pheasant, boss. Uh, I hope it's. Uh, I hope it could be. So it's, it's certainly a good start. And the me, victims boss. clarified. The victims that he's clarified. Not he has no injuries and he has no reason to believe that that is. A, he has no knowledge of that blood. Good work. That will go on the briefing. See where we go from there. Okay. Clearly, this man was a victim of a violent robbery, and there's forensic evidence that is supporting in that. Uh, the big lead we've got is the blood, isn't it? And the blood is uh, uh, near that gun cabinet, and that blood doesn't appear to be the victim's blood, and. If life was so easy, that blood will come back to offenders' blood and be on our national DNA database. We'll know if it's human blood tomorrow morning, and by Monday we'll know who, you know, if we've got if we can identify that person for the national database. So the chain of events is that window in the kitchen goes through, shotgun barrel comes through window. He runs into dining room and sort of tries to barricade himself in. They've come into the house and they're shouting for him to get out. And then because he's not coming out at that point one or two of them go outside and smash the taller window and point the, the shotgun through and he's cornered, basically, then. But he just said, I knew that I couldn't mess with these guys when I, when I saw, obviously, the shotgun and, and what, they would, what they did to him. He's very well known in the area for having guns. Mm. So, uh, this is a serious job. There are significant firearms and ammunition outstanding from this. They end up in crime hands. It's a big issue for us. Um, so that's the major priority with this issue. The victim isn't uh, physically massively injured, but he's been through a trauma, so we've got to look after that victim. But yeah, the main thing is those firearms and the theft. Caught some ambulance that somebody's fallen on their one month old baby. Currently up at uh, A&E, uh, this child's got significant injuries to its head. Further north, in Blackpool, officers are responding to a distressing emergency call. A baby has been severely injured in suspicious circumstances. The next morning, detectives launch an investigation, believing the child's injuries may have been caused deliberately. At quarter to three this morning, I got a briefing from Andy Vaughan, who's a night DI, who informed me that uh, he said it was a one-month-old child um, was very poorly as a result of an incident that occurred, he thought, at the home address, and that two persons, as a result of that, had been arrested. One was a child's mother. Uh, from what he said, he thought one of them was the brother of mum. Wanted for this matter also was her partner, dad of the child. Who dad is? Out of the three adults who were in the house when the baby was injured, Police are suspicious of the child's father, who fled before the officers arrived. The mother has named him as Arta. We know that he's the partner of Mum. Uh, we know his name. Uh, we know that he's a Polish uh, person. Uh, but other than that, there's not a great deal of details out there. It's going to be quite a difficult challenge for us to identify uh, the location of this individual. The baby is in intensive care at a specialist children's hospital. The mother is at the child's side, but she's under arrest and has given conflicting accounts of what happened. Mother has given two, if not three, versions of events, if you want to call them that so far, okay. to police, stroke, yeah. medical staff. She initially said that partner had fallen over and crushed the baby's head. Okay. She's told uh, hospital staff that baby has fallen into cat basket, something like that. And the latest update that I'm told she's given to the consultant, Alder Hay, is that she had hold of the child when she was pushed by a partner and she's fallen into the door. She hasn't been consistent at all. She's given different stories. It's, it's incredibly serious, talking about the murder of a five-week-old uh, baby, possibly. Um, the child has got life-threatening injuries. He said, basically, he's got 20 years as a paediatric consultant surgeon. Mm. Um, 
and you see children every day that have mm. fallen on mm. banisters and, and things like that. He said this is this not isn't it. accidental. Okay. Yeah. The key issue for me really is to try and locate the partner of the mother of the child and there's an enormous amount of inquiries being undertaken to try and identify him. It's critical to the investigation because without his um, account uh, we, we will not fully understand what's happened. There's also the risk of valuable evidence being lost if we do not have any contact with him uh, for some time. We just need to do the intel around him to see what threat he may pose. Because okay. it might be that we need some taser authority or whatever okay. to do the man on. At the same time, we've got this issue around mum, because mum is a suspect in this case, but also she is a potentially grieving mother. And it's balancing the dilemma between those two, uh, two very important issues. The mother and uncle of the baby have named Arta as the person who fled the scene. So officers have launched a manhunt. They have reason to believe that Arta's sister lives in Blackpool. I'm taking a lot of officers down to an address where we believe a suspect may be. We've had reliable information this male may be there, but it's only a maybe. So basically we're going to go with a number of officers and see what we can find at that address. So what I've got now is two officers in a plain car. They're in uniform. They're going to try and get around the back of the address just to make sure no one leaves or... Uh, enter the premises while we're there. Hello, I'm Sergeant Bain for Club Police. Can I step in and just have a quick word? Do you know where your brother is at the moment? Uh, I don't know where he's he. Why? OK, because we need to speak to him, that's all. I think that this, if you want... He's talked to him this morning since the office is Yeah. I want on a mobile for him. No. The baby has been injured. Sorry? The baby has been injured. Oh, my God. That's why we're here. OK now? Well, no. we, we don't know. She said she spoke to him yesterday, but on a, on a mother's mobile phone, mum being in Poland. I mean, she's saying her brother's in Poland, she, and I think she generally believed that at the time. Yeah. I'll get details, yeah. mobile phone, all the things, because she speaks better English than the, uh, yeah. than the blogs and everything else suggested. Along with the woman and children in the premises, there is a man who officers want to restrain as a precaution whilst they search the house. So what we do, sir, just turn around for me. You're going in handcuffs at the moment while we do a search. I can smell cannabis. Cannabis? Yeah, yeah, I can smell it. Um, could you arrest this gentleman for possession, please? Yeah. The team are no closer to finding the suspect, but before they can continue the search, they have to caution the man detained in the house after finding a cannabis crop. Maybe one in ten times, normally you knock on a door, you get a perfectly decent response and you find out what's happening and, and move on to the next one, but you have to deal with what you find sometimes. You never know what you're going to find when you walk through a door. Back at police HQ, the team seem to have hit a dead end. They're struggling to find out the true identity and whereabouts of their chief suspect. OK, key thing for me at the moment is really this Arta thing. There's yeah. this confusion that we've got, whether Arta it was there or whether he's in Poland. Yeah. You know, there's a massive difference in the two accounts here. You've got someone saying that he was here last night, yeah. um, having, having some involvement in the injuries, and then you've got his sister saying that he's been in Poland for the last three years. Now, we, we've got to actually get clarity on that, otherwise we are going to struggle with this inquiry. Police in Blackpool continue to investigate an appalling incident where a baby was severely injured at home. As the child fights for its life, detectives have re-interviewed the mother, who's given several accounts of what took place. Because people are talking about two males in there. There's a couple of interviews now where they said it's two males plus mum. Yeah. OK, so we know one of the males is brother. Yeah. And we need to confirm who the second one is. Andy Murphy and his team think that the second male who fled the scene is the father of the injured baby. Right, there's no intel in about this Arta anywhere. According to doctors, the child's injuries weren't caused accidentally. They're saying that the injuries are catastrophic head injuries, consistent yeah. with the like of which they would see in a car crash situation. Oh. 
The mother has told police her partner had been drinking and there was an argument between them when she fell against an open door. Forensic specialists are at the scene to try and determine what actually took place. We're in the hallway. Uh, this is the scene where the babies received the injury. The area that we're concerned with is around the hallway and the entrance into the kitchen. And that's the package door. Uh, obviously, if we're looking at that later on, we may be considering DNA evidence, which is why we packaged it the way we have. The information we had was that she fell against the door walking out. The door has always been open, so I find it very difficult to understand how that would have happened, that she would have been forced back with such force to cause that injury. Having heard all the different accounts, having seen the scene for myself, if I was going to put my own theory as to what's happened, it would be very much that he's been in here, probably around this area here. She's been in front of him holding the child. He's pushed her at some point. And with the door being up against that wall, if they've hit that door, that would account for why there was no giving the door, and that would maybe account for the injuries that the child has received. Officers searching for the elusive Arta have had no luck locating the suspect. However, they now have access to the mother's phone. This allows them to examine the numbers she's most in contact with. Police have now linked those phone numbers back to various addresses in Blackpool. The next address we're doing are all about the phone. It's registering address, it's calling addresses, and there's addresses associated with that phone. So these addresses are all still valid, it's just what order we're going to do them in. Gives us the most likely chance of finding someone with this phone. As they enter a house rented by a group of Polish males, officers immediately make an arrest. This morning, time, you're under arrest. Right. It's suspicious possession of a controlled item, the drugs that are on the table. Right, yeah, okay. Nathan, check him down and get him searched. I'll get the details. Take him down there, let's get him searched there. Found a number of yeah. males here and some drugs in the premises. So I think that's that. As the team detain the man, he arouses further suspicion after withholding his identity. Has he given you a name yeah, that time? No. He's refused to give his name. Right. Nathan, yeah. tight grip on him then, please. Tight grip on him, everyone's got a name. Real tight grip on him, Nathan. Emma, dry cell and away from everyone else. Interestingly, the first male that came out refusing to give his name. The mysterious male is brought into custody at Blackpool Police HQ. Time of arrest, please. The time of arrest was at yeah. three o'clock today. At the place of events. As the man is booked into custody, detectives are again interviewing the mother who so far has been unwilling to cooperate fully. Crucially, she tells them she lied about her partner's name. He isn't called Arta, but is in fact Tomash. Why did she talk about the other name? Arta. Arta. She basically, um, you know, like this one, yeah. because tomash has got problems. Uh, right. So right. she accepts that she did tell us it was Arta? Yes. But it, that was to protect Tomas. Yes. Um, she's phoned Thomas when she gets to the hospital. OK. Um, because she blames him. She blames him that he's knocked her over, and that's why it's happened. OK. But she's saying that, that knocking over is an accident. She, it's, it's an accident. An accident. I'm with Police have also been interviewing the brother of the mother, who was also arrested at the scene. He is slowly beginning to give police more information. He says it's not Arta um, oh. that was there, so I called uh, Thomas... Uh, but he's still being cagey about who Thomas is. Very, very tearful. Yeah. Um, clearly, in my view, wants to tell us what's happened. Not a description um, of Thomas. Just uh, very short hair, yeah. a bit like a, a skinhead. Yes. Yeah. Um, thin build. Um, so, so I would imagine just yeah. on that one of these that have been locked um, up. Yeah. Your name is Thomas. Ah, oh, right. Uh, what's Parble. the description of this skinhead? Is it yeah. Parble Thomas Rolpel? After police found identification on the suspicious man in custody, they now believe they have the person they were looking for. This could be really uh, quite, a, quite an important breakthrough, so thanks for uh, what you're doing. We had uh, an interview with the brother of Mum, 
and during which he started now to give us a bit more clarity about what happened. And critically, he's spoken about Mum's partner and give us some more details about who that is. Now, amazingly, we have now realised that the per one person that we arrested at Night Central Drive is actually the person that we want in respect of the really serious assault. To add to the seriousness of the incident, news on the baby's worsening condition could mean the investigation becomes a murder inquiry. Baby's critical. Critical, yeah. Um, so. Deteriorated. We've done an operation and wasn't successful. Yeah. So we think we're within any time now they're going to look at considering... Yeah, yeah switching after the withdrawal. Yeah, in the last few hours, it's become apparent to us that baby may well die tonight. These cases are the most traumatic for our staff to investigate because of the vulnerability of the victim. It is, in my opinion, stuff that does stay with you. It doesn't change. You're as shocked now as you were on the first one, and every case is unique and individual, and there's no getting around it. It is incredibly difficult and challenging and upsetting, and police officers are just human like everybody else. The team can only hold Tomas Raskovic for another 48 hours. In that time, they have to prove that the injuries were caused deliberately. I think the next two days will make the difference between whether we move on by way of a prosecution or not. So, really important, next two days. Detectives in South Lancashire are investigating a violent armed robbery of a remote farmhouse where the owner was bound and tied up and seven hunting rifles were stolen. Traces of blood were discovered at the scene and police hope it will lead them to the culprits. We'll get lucky if it's an offender's blood, yeah. but it's hard to describe if it's not. No. There's no obvious person it could be, could there? We've separated all the people that were there that were victims mm -hmm. and, and relatives. We believe this has happened. Yes. We can't depend on that blood coming back no. DNA. No. If it doesn't come back, we need to motivate our officers to keep digging. Yeah. The people that have fired a gun through a door believe in the victims behind that door. That, that's horrendous, isn't yeah, it? it's terrible. Two cars used by the robbers were found abandoned. Officers have been deployed to an area where one of the vehicles, a burnt-out Audi, was discovered. Right, OK, very briefly, stolen cars have turned up here and we're just canvassing for witnesses. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. This really is canvassing witnesses at the earliest opportunity to see if they saw anything, heard anything, saw the cars turn up, saw the car being abandoned, that type of thing. Hello, I'm sorry to People you. in a, a close neighbourhood, like where we are now, will report something if they, if they see something. So hopefully it, uh, it gives us lines of inquiry further down the line. One woman who lives in the area has come forward with more information. Any descriptions or anything? She said there's two males. She said one of them ran in front of the and both just said, oh, that was a bit odd. Right. A local resident has reported that at about quarter past ten last night, two males... No better description than that of, of run in front of her vehicle. Unusual because it's a cul-de-sac. She didn't know them, um, and that's something, again, that we'll feed back into the incident room. Forensic scientists are analysing the two stolen cars discarded by the robbers. The first car was found burnt out, but the victim's car is intact and is now subject to rigorous forensic examination. Fingerprints, examination for footwear, fibres, uh, head hurt, any items left behind by the offenders, any items foreign to the scene. Located in and around the steering wheel area here, there was several areas where we located blood. These have been photographed and recovered. There was blood located on the centre console, on the start button, and various places within the roof panels where somebody uh, has touched. Uh, that blood needs to be identified now, uh, which we'll be looking at. Over where the two cars were discovered, search teams have been sent out to look for any discarded items. They've just retrieved a balaclava, but hope to find more. We're now bringing a search team down to make sure there's no other clothing or no other items from that burglary or anything that will give us a forensic opportunity that's been left in this field. Just during the search, uh, in the adjacent field to where the balaclava was recovered, we've, uh, we've found the coat down in the hedgerow. It doesn't appear to have been there that long. There's no leaves or any vegetation on top of it. Um, it looks a fairly new garment. 
So that's now been seized. It will be sealed in the evidence bag and we'll link in with the inquiry team. These items are immediately sent to the lab, where experts have been examining the blood left on a painting in the victim's home. After a nervous wait, the investigation team have received the results. We've had a call from uh, Exhibits Officer Graham. The blood that's gone off from the painting, uh, we've got a full hit, male profile. Brilliant. This is a key moment for detectives. The DNA matches a 25-year-old man who lives in the Wigan area and is known to police. That man's name is David Jolly. We know that he has an extensive criminal background, mainly convictions for violence, and he has been in and out of prison. We've been able to eliminate that that person is not connected to those premises in, in any way, shape or form. So they are going to have to provide us an explanation as to how their blood has, has got to where it was. So it's, it's crucial. It's, it's a good piece of evidence for us. Then, going forward, the considerations for us are around developing an arrest strategy. Yeah. If it's a real who done it, when you get to a point like this where you think you might know who has done it or who's been involved, it's, it's a really kind of good feeling for, for me, for the team, and, you know, it will be for the, for the victim as well, which is, is the overriding consideration, you know, and, and just to sort of do our best to make sure it doesn't kind of happen again, really. The suspect, David Jolly, has a long-standing criminal record and has recently been released from prison. The team quickly moved to make an arrest. The nature of what we're dealing with is um, a physically nasty and violent crime, so it, it will suggest they've got a tendency for violence and you've always got to be on your guard, whoever you're dealing with. Despite knowing where Jolly lives, the police think it's safer to arrest him away from his house, where he could be keeping the seven stolen guns. They have discovered he's due for a meeting with his probation officer. We're aware that the subject is due to be somewhere at a certain time, and there's no reason why um, he shouldn't turn up there this morning. So the ideal plan is that he'll turn up, he'll be arrested, um, and then we'll get officers to search the house or secure the house where he resides, um, again, to maximise those forensic opportunities which we need. We're uh, in probation now, so we haven't really got eyes on him. We're just waiting for someone to ring us if traps. Hopefully not long now. He should be arriving now, any time now. You can't set your watch by, by anybody, but we'll just wait and see. Just a waiting game. These criminals, they don't turn up on time, so just have to hang five and a bit more. David Jolly is now two hours late for his appointment, and detectives are about to admit defeat on the sting. Not the outcome I was expecting this, I have to say. A little disappointing. The suspect has refused to go into probation. I think he's probably kind of spooked, not sure why. We cell sighted the um, suspect's phone, which puts him in the location of the home address. Their firearms team are going to do um, a firearms approach to the address once they've got the warrant. <laughs> that hopefully will we'll get him out of the address and we'll arrest him. Secure the address, just front and back it outside. You mean you go around the back then? Yeah. These two the front. No one, no one goes in, no one goes out. And the key is for me is elements of surprise. We're quick, we're fast, straight in. There's no messing. Everyone's secure. It just doesn't give them the chance, and that's that's what prevents injuries. Please open the door. You got five seconds. Please, put your arm behind your back. Just put your arm behind your back. Officers enter the suspect's home, but frustratingly for them, there is no sign of the elusive David Jolly. Entry's been secured to the address. Our subject is in here. We will carry on now and do a full systematic search of the address, looking for property that were, is, is pertinent to the investigation. I'll, I'll ask you now, is there anything in the address that shouldn't be here? Drugs, money, firearms? There might be a bit of a joint. OK. The team set about searching the property. CS gas. 
basically illegal in this country. And quickly make an interesting discovery. Two air rifles, but not the guns stolen from the victim's home. Despite an unsuccessful operation, the investigation team believe they're close to locating their chief suspect, David Jolly. It's not going to go away, is it? If it takes us a week, if it takes us a day, seven days, seven weeks, we will find him. And we will keep coming around seeing it, has he been here, has he been here? I know, and you don't want that. This guy's a prolific criminal. He's been thieving for many, many years. Um, he knows that we're after him, and we use every available tactic. All we want is him safely arrested as soon as possible. In Blackpool, detectives are working overtime to discover how a baby was severely injured during a violent incident at home. The child continues to fight for its life. The mother claims that the injuries were caused accidentally, but doctors think that this is highly unlikely. Uh, the consultant said, in my 20 years of experience, I've only seen injuries like this to a child once before, and that was when a child had been physically thrown against a wall. Right. Police have arrested the baby's father, Tomasz, who is also wanted in Poland on suspicion of serious offences and are liaising with Polish police because of the severity of the crime. They hope that the child's uncle, who was a witness to the incident, will overcome his fear of Tomasz and tell them what really took place. We could do with getting into the brother again. And let him know. And let him know we got Tomasz. Because yeah. I get in a sense he was frightened. If he's coming down those stairs at the right time, he would be the one, almost anybody who comes independent, that could give us a clear objective picture of what's happened. No. He has told lies. But at the end of the day, we're not suggesting he's involved. Though. What I'd like to do with brother, you know, I still think we should bang in an interview with him because of what Mick says this morning. And I know, and just, yeah, just yeah. finish him off, because yeah, yeah. Mick was saying last night, he was, was on the yeah. cusp of, of yeah, telling us. Yeah. Probably scared. Yeah, yes. He, he'd be scared of this lad. Yeah. He doesn't know we've locked this lad up yet, yeah. does No, he? he doesn't know. So I think and just a quick, to complete a quick interview it, now, yeah. tell him that, and then, yeah. and then treat him as a witness. Yeah. Yeah. Before the team interviewed the child's uncle again, Andy has asked Detective Constable Matt Normanton to question the suspect, Tomas Raskovich. Interviewing is Matt's area of expertise. So initially when I was brought on to the, the major incident, I was brought in as an interviewing officer. Then my role was sort of the interviewer for the, the main suspect. Matt will interrogate the suspect through an interpreter over several hours to check every detail of his account. I'm going to ask you then, Thomas, did you try and kill the baby? <laughs> did you intentionally cause serious injuries to the baby? I want you to tell me what's happened to the baby. Well, what happened, uh, he just hit something. When I was walking past my girlfriend, uh, I moved her and she fell. Okay. The injuries uh, to baby are, are, are catastrophic and have been likened to car crash type injuries, which actually uh, the accounts given by both Mum and, uh, and Thomas uh, don't reflect that really. So this is why I'm using that phrase, they're trying to minimise uh, what's happened. May well be, so we just need to work through that and be open-minded. Why did you not go to the hospital? I don't know. Your son could have died that night in that hospital and you didn't go. And I, I put that to you, that that's why you've left the house as well, because it's your fault. You left the house because you knew the police were coming, didn't you? On Sunday, you gave false details. No, as I said, because there were drugs on the table. Because, no, because you have the baby and because you knew that the police were looking for you. Police have also been interviewing the baby's uncle. He has now begun to reveal some potentially crucial information. And he says that during this argument, Th Thomas is, is absolutely, sh he's just shoved her. He describes it as a, as, as a real big push. Mm -hmm. And Mick said, he said the way he did it was like a police tactic, like a get back push. Yeah, yeah. And she's just gone flying into the, into the door with the baby. Right. Into the door? 
Yeah. Door three or more doors. Backwards or forwards? I'm not. He, he's, put, he's, he's scanned around that again. Okay. Mick's yeah. probed him on that and he's saying, I, I don't really know. I can't really say how she fell. He just gave her this almighty push and she's gone flying with the baby. I was going to ask actually what, what we think the relationship is between. Like, like, crying to death in the time I asked him, he's admitted that. Yeah. Right. He said that's one of the. He's wanted to protect his sister, that's why yeah. he's not told the truth at the beginning. Yeah. But he's also very frightened of him. Right. I can't see any, any benefit from him in telling lies to say that Thomas has physically assaulted his sister or the baby. Like initially, he has told lies, and if anything, he's displayed some loyalty towards his sister and her partner initially, but almost at the 11th hour during his suspect interviews, he's come out with this account. For Andy and the team, the brother's willingness to talk could prove to be pivotal in getting justice for the baby. The skill of those interviewing officers who spoke to the brother of mum under caution and got that information about what had happened and that was really important. For me that is a ray of hope in an otherwise really bleak case. Detectives in Blackpool are investigating a truly shocking case of domestic violence involving a young baby who's in hospital on life support. Tomasz Rakiewicz, the child's father, has been arrested. He claimed he merely bumped into the mother, who fell holding the child. However, police believe it was no accident. The investigation team have had a breakthrough with the baby's uncle. They've persuaded him to go back to the scene so that he can demonstrate what really happened. My sister were about here. Tomasz stał gdzieś tutaj. Tomasz was standing about here. Show me how Thomas pushed your sister. Proszę pokazać jak Tomasz popchnął pana siostrę. A było coś takiego, że jakoś tak Something like this, and then she fell against the door. I would say, and I'm far from any expert, it's probably one one of the most important lines of inquiry, because the key witness, and he's the only real eyewitness to that incident. He was standing about there. And he jumped towards her. Detectives are eager to put this new testimony to Tomasz in interview. He says that you, with both hands, have jumped and pushed her quite hard, causing her to fall on the floor. I don't know why he's making that up. There's a big difference, Tomasz, between rushing past somebody and pushing somebody. And I, I want to know what you think are the consequences, the result of pushing somebody that, that has a baby in their arms. Mm -hmm. But I didn't push anyone. Detectives now believe they have significant evidence against Tomash. Thankfully, his son is beginning to show some signs of improvement. Baby hasn't died. And that's testament both to the strength of baby, but also the brilliance of the medical experts involved in this case. It's a really tragic case, because what you've got is um, alcohol fueled domestic violence, um, whereby we believe the offender's intention has been probably to assault mum. And in doing that, little baby's been caught in between that. And as a result of, 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 of those actions, has received some really serious injuries that actually are going to change that baby's life forever. And we know now from the prognosis from the expert medical examiners that that child will never, ever be the same again. And it's, it's really sad. Hello. We have now convinced CPS to charge him with a Section 18 uh, wounding, which essentially is grievous bodily harm with intent. This one. Oh, look at that. And that's a really serious charge. It's probably just one down from attempt murder. He will stay in custody up until the trial date. Thomas, uh, I'll pass you over to Thomas now just so you can introduce yourself to him. Interpreter. What we've also needed for, for, a, for a charge is uh, a very brief overview from, from a consultant paediatrician at Older Hay and at Blackpool Vic stating that those injuries are A, very severe, and, and B, uh, non accidental. 
should the baby die, then I think what, what will probably happen is that we'll have to uh, go to prison, bring him back to the police station, interview him again and then look to charge him with, with the murder. Hi, my name's Matt, I'm the detective. I'm just going to read the charge out um, slowly now to Thomas and then if you could tell him um, what I've said, please. I believe that our primary focus should be on the voice of the child, that unheard voice and we should act on that child's behalf. And we've done that in this case, so it should take a great deal of satisfaction from where we are now. Thomas, you're charged with offence shown below. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. You're charged on the 22nd November at Blackpool unlawfully and maliciously caused grievous bodily harm. I think, for me, from initially when he lied to me, um, from there you sort of... you're starting to form an opinion, really of what that person is like. OK, Thomas, you the colleague. Thank you very much. Uh, and he was clearly very evasive and lying at the beginning, so, yeah, you're in there in that interview and um, he's very much minimalising everything. Uh, and at no point, really, did he show any emotion. What I find quite key in all this, not once did he ask me how the baby was. Police investigators in South Lancashire are on the hunt for 40-year-old David Jolly, who's wanted in connection with the shocking armed robbery of a remote farmhouse. He wasn't found at his home address, so police are on their way to the Wigan area, where informants have alerted them to a property near the town centre. Officers are in luck. Jolly is arrested at the scene without incident. We worked with our colleagues in the Greater Manchester area and we basically utilised every single option available to us in terms of trying to identify where he was, associates knocking on doors, um, and really we kind of managed to sort of contain it to one address. He was inside the address and, you know, we appear to have recovered a shotgun as well. Along with the gun, Jolly's DNA matches blood left at the crime scene, blood in the car used to escape, and a balaclava found close to where the vehicle was dumped. OK, what's the reason for arrest, please? Based on forensics that have been uh, retrieved from a scene of a crime, a armed robbery, this male has been identified as one of the offenders. David Jolly hasn't helped us in our inquiries. He hasn't really taken the opportunities that have been presented to him to tell us about items that are outstanding or anything. Um, I'm not surprised by that. The evidence against him is really strong and he's going to have to come up with something pretty spectacular to um, explain it away. We know that Jolly's banged to rights. We know at least four men are involved in this offence. Uh, a concern to me is that it's three or four outstanding people. This is a nasty, nasty robbery in a person's home. We need to make sure that these, uh, these other people are prosecuted, if we can at all, and that guns are recovered. I don't want to be here. See ya. David, here. Yeah. I don't want to be here with that Come here. camera guy. Turn David, to myself, yeah? listen to me now. No, just turn me back to myself, please. Yeah? Listen. David, we just listen to your charges, listen. please. I'm going to remind you of your rights, OK? Your solicitors are aware. All right. The Crown Prosecution Service have authorised detectives to charge David Jolly. Uh, on the 13th of November, Rob shotguns, rifles, cash and Land Rover discovery to the value of £72,000. You do not have to say anything, but it may only be offensive if you don't mention now something which later line in court. As you do say, maybe given an evidence. Can I make any reply to the charges? No. Um, he is on a recall to prison and he has got previous four offences on bail. The likelihood is, uh, if found guilty, he's going to face a significant custodial sentence. OK, David, then I'm refusing your bail for the reasons that to feel that you're likely not to appear on bail, that you may commit offences on bail and due to the seriousness of the offence. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. Mm.
It's a really good feeling for the team that were involved that David Jolly's been convicted and received um, a decent sentence for this offence. I hope it gives some comfort to the victim uh, and to the wider community who were uh, affected by this offence. Tomasz Raskiewicz pleaded guilty to assaulting his son.